Hey, what's good? SAP Dude here. It's nice to have you here. In this video, I will tell you more about an SAP product called Dynamic Forms. So grab your favorite drink and let's do it together. If you are new to the channel, free administrative points here. I explain things by doing them. No marketing trash talk here, no empty promises. Second, I always have real business cases with me. This way you learn fast and catch things straight away. And the third thing, I explain SAP, but it does not mean I'm always supporting the ideas. If something works like a shit in my opinion, of course, I will tell you that. Let's roll. Before we go through the dynamic forms, we gotta understand why we may need them. For this, I will use the plant where I'm currently in, and which you know pretty well, Texas Workshop. They are running SAP as for HANA, but still using paper in some cases like in this one. Monthly maintenance of a vehicle, in this case GMC Ventura, involves many steps and many checks. Checking engine oil, inspection of tires, then documenting this stuff on the paper, refilling the fluids and so on. This can be done in SAP in various ways. I explain them in this video, six ways to implement PM checklists in SAP. And today we will talk about the last one dynamic forms. Before this happens, let's have some follow-up on this example. In Texas Workshop, there is also a quality slash validation team. What they do is they check the maintenance work done by the technicians. The results are entered on this form. So you see, it's not the checklist anymore, it's a piece of paper with information like what was performed and so on. So let's fill it out quickly with the technician. He enters what he did, what spare parts were used and what issues he faced with. And here comes the second part, validation. Now a quality person takes this paper, enters when she, he did the check and also marks whether it was successful or not. Then at the end, signature of the technician and quality person is provided. What we will do in this video, we will take these two documents and build them in dynamic forms with many improvements. Before this happens, let's have a quick overview of the dynamic forms. It's a separate SAP product based on business technology platform. In simple words, it's cloud-based and of course you need a separate license for it. It allows you to create and manage forms in a digital way on the cloud platform. Most of the things are based on so-called drag and drop approach where you drag the available components and fill them out with your content. You will see it in action in a couple of minutes. Of course, you can follow the full history of the changes to the form, versions and stop. Once the form is ready, it can be part of, for example, PM notification or work order in your S4HANA system. The results get captured by a technician and stored on BTP. Moreover, dynamic forms work in both online and offline mode. It means if you have your custom mobile app, you can embed this functionality there and leverage offline capability as well. If you are using SAP Service and Asset Manager, dynamic forms are there by standard, so you don't need to develop anything there. If you don't have any mobile solution right now, the forms can be opened directly on the desktop. Before we jump to the practice, quick, simple look at the architecture. On the left side, we got the business technology platform. What we got here is, first of all, the dynamic form subscription. It's the must. If you have service and asset manager or maybe a custom mobile app, you need mobile services subscription as well. Of course, there is a database for the forms. We also have development environment called Business Application Studio sync with the mobile services. Now we gotta connect it with our ERP system, right? So we got three options. We can do it with S4HANA, private cloud or on-premise. Or we can connect it with SAP ACC. This way forms can be part of, for example, PM notifications or work orders. Of course, there is specific configuration and connection setup needed, but for the sake of simplicity, I skip it here. Once this is in place, the forms can be accessed on a desktop or mobile device via custom mobile application or SAP service and asset manager. Now let's finally see the dynamic force in action. This is it. I got my access. I'm using a trial version. You can also get one for free for you. There will be a couple of things to set up like authorization and stuff. You will find all this information at SAP Help website. I just show you a snippet of it. You remember our business case. 
We got the following two forms at Texas Workshop and we want to digitalize them. The first one is a pure checklist. Let's start with this one. I launch the form builder and create a new form. We are moved to our form builder, oh yeah, design app. First of all, let's give it a name. It will be a um, PM checklist, then man, V-A-E-H, mate. Form title, monthly vehicle maintenance. I will skip the description. And this is it. In the middle, we got our working space. On the left, list of components, which we drag to our canvas. Let's put our paper checklist on the screen, a bit to the right, and we will create the form based on it. Okay, we want to have the title. What I do, I go to the text controls and select formatted text area. We got other options here, but formatted works the best for me. You will see why. I will stretch this component like this. Monthly vehicle maintenance to the center, change size, bold, underline. We go with these things now, vehicle date, current mileage, checked by. Vehicle will be a text field. By the way, I could have it as a dropdown and retrieve the list of vehicles from SAP, but it's another level of building the form. Plus, it requires specific services to be in place to retrieve this data. I go down and select the date component. Before I go further, let's squeeze this section like this. I add the added to text fields real quick. We'll start adding the checklist sections. But before this happens, I want to show you the bottom part of dynamic forms. First of all, make sure you regularly save it. Yeah, I had a case where I created a checklist, closed the window and it disappeared. There is no automatic saving or draft mode here, at least for now. Here you can export the form to XML format. It will be handy for you in different scenarios. One of them is that you can then import this form with this file. Especially when you're doing some trainings and have trial version, you want to share your form with other folks, give them the XML, they will import it to their account. But here is the most important functionality which I want to show you. Testing. We can test what we did so far. Once we press it, we are moved to the desktop view of the dynamic form. This is basically what a business user will see and can play with. So vehicle name or picking up a date and stuff will come back to this part again, so no worries. It's time to add the checklist sections. First one is the general inspection. What we can do, we can go to the form structure and select new section. Of course, I can for instance move it upwards. With Ctrl plus Z, I revert this change. We give it a name, so number and general inspection. And here we will have a list of things to do. So for this kind of stuff, I will use a repeated grid. Let's add it here. You will also see an advantage of this component later. It's time to add a text field, check for visible damage to the vehicle body. The OK not OK checkbox, I will change to a yes, no radio button. So only one option can be selected, like this. Let's also add a text field. It will be an optional comment from a technician. We will do the same for the second point, which is fluids and levels. This time I take the component we created and just copy paste it. I rename it, including the checks and I add other steps. Let's stop here and test the form again. So you see, we can also now enter the result checks. What a business user, for example, technician may also do is adding new steps here like this. This is the advantage of this component but maybe you don't want to let them do this. Then it's better to switch to the basic grid. Why? If you go to the repeated grid settings and change it to read only, just have a look. You freeze the whole component plus what is inside. If you change only the fields to read view only, the effect is as follows. You can anyway enter new rows, but without the text of course. But if you create a simple grid, move these components over there and change the task description to read only and you test it, you see, user cannot change the text, add new steps, only the results and comment. This kind of logic can be also based on some formulas in XPath expression, so it can be dynamic. I follow this approach with the rest of the sections. And this is it. This is our first form. The total time spent for this one by myself was around 5 minutes. Not bad, right? 
Of course, it's really simple, but the idea of this video is to give you the first look and feel. Then, if you liked it and would like to explore further, in the description of this video you will find everything you need. Let's go with the second form. You remember, this one is used mainly by the quality slash validation team. So we go to the form builder, we create a new form and start building it. The title as previously, text fields and another text fields. Important thing here, it would make no sense to enter by the technician things like what he, she did, what spare parts were used for the work. All these things are captured in SCPS for HANA by confirmations of operations and also goods issue. So instead of giving here a field for some comments, I just put a fixed value like please check the work order confirmations directly in SAPS for HANA. And here please check the goods movements. And then I set these fields as read only of course. Alright, now we add a subtitle quality slash validation team review, inspection date field, reviewer name and the checkboxes. This time no radio buttons yes or no, but like this. Then I edit it to pass and fail, the third one I delete. Let's readjust it a bit like this. Another field with optional comments. And at the end, the signatures of a technician and QA validation person. It's time to test the form. Everything works as expected. Well done. Again, these were two really simple examples where we did not connect with S4 HANA. But please have in mind that you can have forms with dynamic content, with validation formulas and more. I put now on the screen a few shots from S4 HANA showing how to assign, find the forms once you get the connection established along with the whole config. Since this is a quite fresh product, you can expect many improvements and further development here. If you want to dive deep into it, understand how SAP supports PM checklist, I encourage you to check the description of the video, you will find more stuff from my side there. There's also SAP help website, which I linked over there. If you like this video, consider any of the activities like posting, comment, thumbs up or down and subscribing the channel. See you in another one. Cheers.